Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Engineers. Um, I'm going to follow up my mining ship tips video with a rover tips video. So again, this is going to be just a few of some of the tips and tricks that I've picked up over the years of playing Space Engineers. Um, it's probably going to be most useful to, to new players and, and midterm players. Um, and it, there may also be a few tips that you're not aware of if you've been playing for a while. Just things to make your lives a bit easier and also some design choices to consider when building a rover. So I've got a few examples in the world here. I've built uh, a couple of rover bays, got the, the large survival rover, um, that's the blue team rover. I've got Yoshi's Labrador and then Omega and I, well Omega's Tapir rover. Um, because they all incorporate some of the design choices that I'm going to be talking about today, as well as some of the tips. So, the first tip uh, I'm going to give is something that is present on the Labrador, and also present on the Tapir. So, what this is, is basically, when you build your first rover, you're probably going to be a bit of a sausage, and you're going to crash, or you're going to break some wheels or something. Now, a really useful way to do these repairs in the field is typically digging holes, right? You just dig holes around your rover to, to pop the wheels back on. Um, which can, yeah, it could be a bit of a pain trying to flip your rover over or what have you. So, your rover over. Interesting. So the best thing to do, actually, is to put these jacks on your rover. So if I show you here, get a welder out. So, yeah, we have these pistons here. So, all you, to be honest, you can usually get away with one. So, just strap a piston somewhere to your rover, and then say you bust, I don't know, this wheel, and it's it's broken, right? You grind the piston off, and you just attach it, like here where this seat is, extend it, and then it will push this side of the rover up, lift it up, and then you can add the wheel, fix it, and then drop it the rover back down, and return the, the piston to its location. Alternatively, you can do what Omega's done here and what Yoshi's done, which is pistons all around. So then, let's say you break a wheel, you can press this button, lift the rover off the ground, and then you can add wheels, weld them up, you can fix any, any damage that you might have underneath um, very quickly. Also, it could be used to, to right the rover. Let's say you flip the rover and you can't get it back up, even with gyros. You're in like you maybe you're stuck. You can if it was on its side, you can perhaps put a piston on the top and use it to push the rover on on that side. Uh, a bit of leverage, basically. So yeah, I mean pistons overall. I always I would always always have at least one piston carried on your rover somewhere because <laughs> they're just so useful. I mean the fact that you could just go under, you can fix wheels, fix bits, you can change things. It yeah, it's hard to beat. Um, so yeah, I would carry a piston on the rover. Uh, that comes with another tip, which actually none of these have except Yoshi's, but even still it doesn't have what I would do. So another useful tip is when that wheel does break, it can be a bit annoying sometimes to have it sort of stored as components in there. So what you can actually do is just attach a wheel on the side, like literally just find your wheel size, find a location. And just like stick a wheel like that and just literally carry it like a real car would and then when you need to replace the wheel lift the rover up grind the existing one well, actually it won't be there because it's broken right and then grind this one down for components and build it up so you're basically just carrying the components but in the fully built form if that makes sense and it kind of looks cool sometimes um yeah so having a spare wheel can be good as well as a spare ladder I think I might have deleted it. Did I delete it? Yoshi's going to kill me. Yeah, you see how there's a ladder there? You can do the same thing as I just talked about. You can grind this ladder off and put it on you know, a different block or something if you need to climb up. Or, or get to somewhere that you couldn't otherwise get to. So yeah. And then, the, so yeah, the second tip would be a spare wheel, a spare ladder. The next thing is suspension tuning. So, in general, you always want to configure your wheels, etc. But, so let's say you've built a little pad like this, right? You've got a connector for your rover. 
Um, it's all hooked up to your conveyor system, etc. And you're going to drive your rover on. There we go. Let's back her up. Nice and gently. Lovely. Oh. The connector doesn't fit. What do we do? So, there's a few things you can do. The easiest thing to do, to be honest, is just hold X. This crouches your rover. Basically turns it into a low rider. Um, and then you can hook it up. And then as soon as you undock, it'll just spring back up. And then you're ready to go again. Uh, you can also do jumps with this. If you don't know. As you drive in, hold... Hold X, let go, and you'll you'll do a jump. <laughs> yeah, it sounds stupid if you know about it, but a lot of people don't know about it. It could be really useful for getting out of situations, um, and like I said, you can crouch to get onto connectors as well. So that's a really useful feature. Instead of having to, you know, constantly go through your rover suspension settings and things like that. Um, you can just, I've made a, I've, I've done that awfully there. You can just uh, crouch the rover with the X button and use it to connect. So I'll just show you again. So back onto the uh, rover bay, hold X, press P, dock up. And then when you undock, the rover comes back up. So yeah, that's uh, that's the next tip. So yeah, you can literally just crouch the rover. You can do jumps, and you can also crouch it to, to get onto connectors, which is always really useful. Um, the next thing is gyro override. So let's say you flip the rover, which, let's be honest, isn't <laughs> isn't the, the maddest thing that could, that could ever happen. Um, how can I flip this rover? Like that. There you go. Oh no, I flipped my rover. It's all upside down and, and stuff. And oh dearie me. So let's say you flip your rover like this. And you're like, yeah, right, what do I do now? Put a gyro somewhere on your rover. I would always have a gyro somewhere on your rover. Find the gyro in the settings. Omega's already set this up. So yeah, find the, find the gyroscope in your settings. Omega set it up, so I just have to unset it. Um, and then you want to go to override controls and then you have to mess about with these but usually it's roll so if we set that to 60 and then turn it off once it's right up it will roll itself and now you can set it on your, your taskbar here set it to override controls on off as you can see it's off at the moment so I can use the gyroscope normally I can you know pitch and tilt and what have you and then if I turn the override on, the rover will, will roll. So let's say I'm on sideways, I'm like, oh no, press the button, and the rover will literally just right itself that easily. Um, yeah, really useful tip to save you a lot of time trying to write your rover. So gyro override controls will save your life. Not save your life, but they'll save you a lot of time. Uh, they might save your life, I don't know. Next thing is booster thrusters. So this is something that you know a lot of rovers have, some don't have. Just a little tip. Sometimes it can be useful to strap some thrusters, especially if it's a cargo rover, if you're going uphill. I wouldn't recommend hydro. I'd just go like battery powered, so ion or atmo. And then you can flick them on and give you a little kick when you're going uphill or you've got a particularly large load of cargo. Um, the next part is bumpers and roll bars. So this is something Yoshi's got here. You see the roll bar around the cockpit here. Omega's sort of got it to an extent. Um, but like we just saw, it's really easy to roll rovers sometimes. Um, so having a roll bar can always help. I mean, you, you know, it's, it's, it's going to do you good having a roll bar. Um, Yoshi's actually got it around the whole rover, if you can see. So if this rover rolls on any side, there's armor protecting all, all of the components apart from the solar panel. But can't really wrap it around that without looking massive so yeah there's a roll cage around the whole rover basically which means that if it rolls it's very unlikely you're gonna break the the rover and it won't be functional 
Um, another way to avoid this is to make rovers low, like this one. So low and wide tread. So this one would be quite hard to hard to roll because the wheels are so spread out and the center of mass is low. But Yoshi, I mean, with the proper tuning, like this rover, you think like, oh, it's well tall. We can't, we, can, you know, it'll ro it'll roll easily. Look, I'm like, I'll give it full lock. It's, it's really not not as easy to roll as it looks. Um, but when it does roll, obviously you've got that roll cage to protect you. So let's just uh, park this back up. Bumpers is a massive thing. So a good idea is blast doors. I think the, the blue team rover does this quite well. So blast doors are pretty much indestructible. I would have blast doors and heavy armor on your chassis, like this one has, uh, because it's going to be taking a lot of hits, especially if you, you're moving quite quickly. As you can see here, blast doors, armor, uh, heavy armor, sorry, blast doors and heavy armor. Yeah, for when you jump in and you're hitting you know, terrain and bumps and, and the likes, it's really going to help you out. So I would always put heavy armor, blast door bumpers, uh, to absorb the impacts because they're they're pretty much indestructible <laughs> it's in space engineers terms to be honest um wheel tuning now th this is another tip so i would always go in and tune your wheels so there's a few things to consider i'll give you the basics uh but obviously it depends on what you do i would always have a little play with your wheels i would never leave them default let's say um you're, you're building a rover like this. What I would do with the wheel settings is I would turn off steering for all the wheels bar the front. And then I would turn off braking for the front as well. Basically, what that'll do is if you're going at like 50 meters per second and you slam to a halt, if you have front brakes on, sometimes the rover will tip forward. Like to do like a, like a you know roly-poly, which is I'm sure the correct technical term. Uh, I would turn brakes off the front and leave brakes on the rear. And then steer with the front. You could potentially do just power in the rear as well, but usually it's alright to do power across the whole board. Obviously, yes, this will depend. You know, people, oh, well, I like to do it like this. I like to, yes, that's obvious. It's, it's a given, right? Everyone does things differently. But in general, you're not going to go wrong by only steering with the front and turning off the brakes because it'll stop you flipping um, as often anyway. So. Yeah, and then the final thing is a little rover bay tip. So, what, when you're building your rover bays, one of the one of the most useful features, hundred percent, is obviously going to be getting underneath the rover because, let's say you don't have pistons all around, you just have one, so you can't actually lift up the full rover. What I'd do is I'd do like a passage gap, and then you can have ladders down like this cargo access so you can get components out and then you can go underneath your rover just like this and you can literally weld everything up because trust me this stuff is going to be getting beaten up it's going to be taking damage as you're driving across terrain you're going to be hitting rocks and you know bumps and hills and trees and all sorts so it's always good to be able to go underneath and actually weld up your rover so yeah th that's just a few rover tips uh, also put lights on your rover lights never hurt spotlights and, and stuff like that. Yoshi does it very well. As you can see. Oh no, I turned the parking brake off. We got spotlights and, and spinning lights and, and all sorts. So, yeah, lights always help. Why do I keep turning that off? But yeah, there's so many more. There's so many more tips. Uh, but I just wanted to go through just a couple like I did with the mining ships video. Just to hopefully help out a little bit. Uh, if you watch this before building a rover, I'm sure you'll add a few bits which you wouldn't have added, which will be really helpful. Um, yeah, so I'll probably do a more in-depth sort of guide and how to build rovers and like more sort of philosophy around design and stuff like that. But for now, those are some general tips which can't hurt to employ on your rover. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe to support the channel. And as always, take care, everybody.